cat's cradle here. Many months ago, someone asked me if I would make a video just stating my opinion on GMO. Now, I don't know why they'd want my opinion on that, but I promised them that I'd make the video. And I've thought about it a long time, and I've gone to make it, to make the video several times, and have chickened out, and um, just never got to the point where I felt like I wanted to deal with the issue. But I'm going to today, um, in a way. I was cleaning out a cabinet, and I came across this bag of soybeans and it's dated 708. I have a very good friend who lives across the street from me and her husband for many years was the superintendent at the local grain elevator and she brought a uh, soup to school one day for a potluck dinner and it had the tiniest little peas in it and they were so delicious and so tender and I asked her what they were and she said well she just chuckled. She said, well, those are soybeans. And I said, I've never tasted them cooked, you know, like that in a soup. And I said, where do you get them? And she chuckled again. She said, well, you know, my husband brings them home to me in a 50-pound bag. She said, I'll bring you some. And the next day she came over and she gave me this bag of soybeans. And you can see none have been used. It's set in my cabinet. Now, if they were delicious and they were given to me, why, why would I not use them? I never could bring myself to feed them to my family because I know they're GMO. I know this is a genetically modified food. How do I know that? I know it because 92% uh, of all the soybean in the U.S. is genetically modified. And I guarantee you that all the soybean grown in my area is genetically modified. I know that because when I pass by the fields that surround my house, they are perfect. They are beautiful and green and lush. And as you look out over them, not a single weed is in the field. I know those beans are genetically modified. I know they're using round, I know they're Roundup Ready seed and that they're using Roundup on those crops because they are perfect. They don't look like your garden or my garden where we, you know, things are, you know, not always exactly the same and unified. The other thing, when you look out over those plants, there is not a variation of more than a couple of inches in any plant over acres and acres and acres of field. They're incredibly uniform. Well, I just don't think that's natural. <laughs> and so I am throwing these soybeans away today because I think uh, to hang on to them for three years is probably long enough to have them taking up space in my cabinet. I'm not going to eat them. I never could bring myself to eat them. Uh, and they're getting pitched. Now, with that said, I mean, I'm surrounded by soybean and corn fields. And the corn as well is genetically modified. Uh, uh, I'm certain of it. Uh, just to share a statistic with you, soybeans, now let me go back and give you just a little bit of history. The first country that allowed transgenic plants, or those that have been genetically modified, was Russia. And they first began offering a disease resistant tobacco. We in the United States offered the first genetically modified food for sale. It was actually called Flavor Saver Tomatoes, and the spelling's a little weird on that. If you want it, email me and I'll give you the, the spelling on it. It went on sale in 1994. That's very, very recent in my opinion. That is only 17 years that genetically modified foods have been on the market in the United States. They uh, developed that tomato, of course, to have a longer shelf life. Now let me tell you what's happened since then. In 1976, of all the soybean grown in the United States, only 7% was genetically modified. 
Where are we now? Well, reports vary from 88% to 92%. On corn, in 1996, 1% of the corn in the United States was genetically modified. Now, we're at 88%. A couple of the other crops that, uh, that we grow that are genetically modified are cotton, uh, which where we get cottonseed oil, and canola as well. Uh, when you talk about those people who are growing the most acres in genetically modified foods, uh, we, we in the United States grow two-thirds of it. The next country probably that's most prominent is Argentina and then Canada, but we by and large grow, grow the biggest part of it. Now, uh, I'll show you, because I've made a list for you on the computer in a minute, of those foods or those, when you look at the label of a food, to know if they have genetically modified organisms in it. And I'll show you the key words to look for. But what do I do to try to keep from putting them on the table in my home? I try growing my own food. That's what I like to eat best, is the food I've grown. Uh, do I save seed? I sure do. I save lots of it. I have packages, little packets everywhere of tomato seed I've saved, and watermelon seed, and cantaloupe seed, and just all kind of seed that I save of my own food that I grow. But I also order... Um, food that is heirloom quality, open pollinated. This is just a survival seed bank. We have two of these and we also have one that's just uh, medicinal herbs. I also have uh, this one that I ordered from Baker Creek Seed Company, which is actually my favorite company to order from. Uh, this is a, a small heirloom package. It's considered uh, northern seeds, which is the, uh, the region I fall in, and it was $55 for this packet. But I also collect uh, lots of heirloom seeds. I order them uh, from lots of different places. Like I said, Baker Creek is my favorite. Um, and I, I really study and research. As soon as my garden plays out in the fall, that's when I get out the seed catalogs and I start going to work uh, finding the seeds that I want for next year. I, I buy flower seeds, calendula. I make a, a good lip balm out of that. Uh, lots of other seeds, uh, flower seeds, echinacea. Um, anyway, if you do your research, you'll know why all of that is of value. So I have lots of seeds, and, and I have much more than this that, that are in the freezer uh, to, to prolong their life. Like I said, I start going through the seed catalogs. Um, this is my favorite. Baker Creek uh, Heirloom Seeds. Love this company. There's lots of people that sell heirloom seeds. This is a company I've used in the past. I probably will not use them again. And I will show you why when I go to the computer. Uh, some scary stuff. If you dig deep enough, uh, you'll find some stuff, stuff that really, really kind of bothers you. Let's go to the computer now and I'll uh, show you some things that you probably need to look into if you want to keep GMO off your dinner table. Another thing I recommend, now, now some people will watch this and say, you know, I live in an apartment, I can't garden, or I'm too old, I don't garden anymore. Well, that's just fine. Uh, I would work at building bonds with people who do garden and see how I can uh, trade them for uh, organically grown food. Um, the other thing is support your local farmers markets. Those people who you know are, are not growing GMO food, uh, buy from them. Uh, let's go to the computer and I'll show you a few things. I made a list for you of some of the <clears throat> things I have read and seen that have influenced how I feel about uh, our food in this nation, and if you have not seen these or read the, uh, these, you probably need to check them out. Um, I'm just going to list these off in random order, and I'll certainly uh, list them below in the comment section. Some of the things you might need to watch are, uh, these are documentaries called Food Inc., King Corn, Fast Food Nation. Uh, this is a book, uh, The Armnivore's Dilemma. Uh, a documentary is In Defense of Food. Another one is The Future of Food. 
There's a short 14-minute uh, video that you can watch on YouTube called Fed Up. I also recommend you watch any of the videos you can about Codex Alimentarius so you can see where this is all going. And I want to direct you, I don't, oh yeah, <clears throat> I did pull it up here. These videos are just excellent. Google, <clears throat> I probably won't put the links up for you because there's lots of great videos and lots of people have uh, put them up. But this is Joel Salatin and he is a farmer in Virginia who is, uh, who is amazing. He is progressive. He is uh, uh, interested in sustainable agriculture and the name of his place is called Polyface Farm. He's fascinating to listen to and much of what he talks about and teaches is applicable even to the home gardener. Uh, I recommend you listen to everything he has to say. Uh, I have found his, his work invaluable. Um, another place you might want to go to is uh, say no to GMO.org. It has lots of good information and will keep you posted. Oh look, and they're showing right here the future of food. You can click on that right there. Uh, their genetic roulette, that's a documentary. Seeds of Deception, The Silent Forest. Uh, just they have lots of lots of great information. Uh, they also have a page that is uh, 10 reasons. Uh, let me see what they say. 10 reasons why we don't need GM foods and it talks to you about the lies we're being told. Some of the topics on here are GM foods won't solve the food crisis. Uh, they increase the use of pesticide. Uh, Bill Christensen says, the promise was that you could use less chemicals and produce a greater yield, but let me tell you, none of this is true. He's the president of U.S. National Family Farm Coalition. Uh, there's better ways to feed a world. It does not, uh, GM does not increase the yield. Uh, it's a great, great page to go to, okay? Uh, another uh, good site is GMO Compass. They have a lot of good information for you. Uh, also, look at people on YouTube who are growing uh, food organically, who are doing it on a home scale. Grow, uh, Grow Your Greens is a good channel I like to watch. Um, Web Cajun is a friend who has a great page who, who uh, is doing some good things, but there's lots of people who are who are uh, giving good gardening information. I think we have started down a slippery slope and we're not going to be able to get back up again. That's just my opinion. I think it happened when our government decided that they would give patents for life, meaning that companies could bring a seed to the table and say we want a patent on this seed and be given it. Uh, if you watch some of the movies I've suggested, you'll understand why. Uh, today, as I was doing a little extra research, I was I was going to uh, tell you about uh, the Doomsday Seed Vault in uh, oh, Stalgard. Let me, and I came across this uh, article that was written. It was actually a talk given, uh, and it implicates, well, I don't want to say that. Um, this guy worked for Seed Savory Exchange for 33 years, and he talks about how the people who are running it now have sold out, and that heirloom seeds that have been collected for families from year, for years and years and years and been given to Seed Savory Exchange uh, with the knowledge that if that family, if the seed that the family had, if, say if it became contaminated or, or uh, unusable, that they could return to Seed Savers Exchange and say, I need some more of my own seed uh, because the seed I have is not viable. And Seed Savers Exchange would then supply that to that family. Well, lots of those seeds that were given to Seed Savers Exchange have gone into the vault in Svalgard uh, and... Well, read the article. Those seeds will now be available to Monsanto. They can get those out. They can gene splice them. They can genetically modify them. Um, anyway, I think there are powers that be that seek to control the food supply. Of course, you know if you control the food supply, you control the people. Uh, and my advice to you is that you make sure that you have your own seed. Save it however you can. Buy it in packets. Learn how to save seed. Um, I've just found a, I've been looking for these. Goat Hollow asked me for some, and I finally 
uh, found them. I don't I don't know where I'd put them, but uh, these are uh, Hubbard squash seeds. They grow an excellent uh, 10 to 15 pounds. These huge, beautiful squash. They're delicious. Um, I sometimes am a little unorthodox in the way I save seed. Um, these are on napkins. I store that. Many of you heard the story of me uh, telling about being at a fine restaurant in Europe with my grandmother, who was actually a very uh, dignified and proper person, and she took a tissue out of her pocket. We were eating a particularly delicious tomato. She took a tissue out of her pocket, and she squeezed the seed on the tissue, then folded the, the, the uh, tissue up, put it back in her pocket, and when she came back home to Texas, she planted those seeds and grew those delicious tomatoes. So I do it a lot the same way. Here are some watermelon seeds that are just going to be folded up and put in an envelope. Here's some little tiny tomato seeds that are squeezed out on a napkin. Here's uh, here's more tomato seeds, and when I get ready to plant them, all I do is just peel that seed off and plant it. It works wonderfully. You don't have to have a really refined technique. I've had great luck, and um, please consider uh, eliminating G GMO as much as possible from your diet. I told you I'd share. A, a short list with you of, of those words you need to look for when you're looking at labeling on foods that will let you know something has probably has GMO in it. Corn syrup, soy lecithin, uh, lecithin uh, fructose, lactic acid, dextrose, cornmeal, soy protein, textured vegetable protein. Folks, if you're eating textable veg textured vegetable protein, and I know a lot of people are doing that to stretch their food dollar in, and uh, using that in place of uh, the more expensive freeze-dried or dehydrated meat. If you're eating TVP, you're eating GMO. Soy oil, corn oil, maltodextrin, and soy flour. Uh, if, you, if you see those things on a label, you are in all likelihood eating a GMO food. Um, I'm not saying that our house is GMO free. I know there's things, especially if we buy something that's processed, which I try very hard not to do. But if you're buying processed foods, I guarantee you they've got soy oil, corn oil, high fructose corn syrup in them uh, almost without question. Do the best you can. <laughs> keep, your, keep your chin up. Uh, I don't know what the future will hold. Uh, in this area, but I know that most of us can do better than we do with safeguarding our diets. Um, and there surely is a better spokesman or somebody who would be more eloquent to talk about GMO than me. But uh, since one of my subscribers asked, I just thought I'd give you give you my opinion. And maybe this will be a springboard uh, for you to do some research to do some research yourself and make some decisions for your family. I hope this helps and um, don't send me any, any hard questions because I probably won't be able to answer them, but I'll try. Cat's Cradle. Bye.